All right, now I'd like to welcome in two of my colleagues, Eric Bossi and Travis Branham, to help us break down the first week of the live period. Guys, we just saw Nigel there. He's live from the Peach Jam. They haven't slowed down. College coaches come back out on Friday, but Nike's still playing. I'm headed there tomorrow. We all bounced around. Trav, you were at the Peach Jam. Bossy, you and I were at Adidas, and Adidas is the first major sneaker circuit to crown a national champion, and you were there on Championship Sunday when Utah Prospects won their second consecutive title. What stood out to you uh, as you watched that championship semifinals and finals? It, a lot stood out to me, but what really stood out to me was the leadership of Ikenna Alozi, a top 10 player in the class of 2026 for the Utah Prospects. You know, he did everything for them. Maybe he's not the best outside shooter, but at six foot three, he's an electric athlete. Big time combo guard who was really basically doing his best Russell Westbrook impersonation. The guy was getting to the rim at will, finishing with big dunks. He was posting guys up. And then for a team that top to bottom plays incredible team defense, he was really setting the tone there. Like you can see the big dunks there. Um, just an exciting guy, a guy that in the class of 2026 has. Kansas, Arizona State, BYU, Oregon, UCLA, all kinds of big-time schools after him. You know, just showed why he's the number one ranked combo guard in his class and why he's ranked number 10 nationally, and his team fed off of him. And we're talking about a team that, while very strong, they're missing their the guy who is presumably going to be their star this summer, five-star shooting guard Isaiah Harwell, who is out with a knee injury all summer long. So to go and win back-to-back -back championships of a really loaded Adidas event was really, really imp impressive, and I think I can – deserves a lot of the credit in that. No doubt. I'm glad we had him in the top 10 going into the summer. You know what I like about him? For a guy who's so physically imposing, I think his skill set has made nice strides. It's, you know, his his physicality is what differentiates him, obviously, in the backcourt. But I, I think we're seeing a clear progression in terms of the things he can do with the ball in his hands. So that, that was exciting for me to see as well. All right, Trav, we said you have already been to the Peach Jam. I am headed there tomorrow. Uh, the big story at the Peach Jam, AJ DeBonza, Cam Boozer, both 14 and one in the regular season with their respective teams. Will they end up in the finals against each other? We will know that in a few days, but there's been some recruiting buzz about the Boozer twins as well. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, they have taken several visits up to this point. They've been to Duke, they've been to Florida, they've been to Miami, um, and there have been other schools involved in rumblings, <clears throat> pardon me, if uh, he could potentially take a visit to North Carolina. Now, John Calipari and the Arkansas Razorbacks were also at his games watching him. Now, you also have to note that Caleb Wilson, a high-priority Arkansas, Arkansas target, is also on his team. So they are keeping eyes on both players. But uh, when you talk around Peach Jam, uh, this recruitment is revolving around three schools. Miami, who is the presumed leader early on in this recruitment, believe it or not, uh, Duke, of course, and also Florida. Again, they have already gotten gotten him on a visit. And Todd Golden was also courtside and continuing to follow him. Um, and like I said, Miami was the leader early on in this recruitment. Now, sounding that things are tightening up and that this is becoming a bit of a toss-up. Um, and, and there is one other area to monitor. There's been some buzz. Could Caden – is there a chance that Caden and Cameron – will actually not be a package deal in the years here for their freshman year uh, in college. And now I don't believe that is the case. I think it is uh, much expected that they these two will remain a package deal. But there was some questions on the sidelines um, whether that would be going forward. Um, and then again, this is a toss-up moving forward. All right, Trav, I want, to, I want to tell you my theory. This is not sourced. It's not reporting. I want to tell you my theory, and you tell me if this, this makes sense or not. I think these two want to play college basketball together, um, but I think they're recruit. I think they both need to be recruited separately because they might be on different paths. I think Cam is very clearly going to pursue a one and done path. That's the expectation. Um, Caden, I'm not sure if that's a, a foregone conclusion or not. So I, I think it is incumbent on whichever of those three schools or another school is recruiting them to not only sell those two on playing together next year, not only sell Cam on the one and done path, but sell Caden on a on a plan that that maximizes his future, whether that's a one year plan, two year plan, three year plan, or whatever the case may be. Um, so while I do believe, like you said, I think that they're likely to play together. It's almost like you have to recruit them separately. Is there? Am I off on that, or is there some validity there? 
No, I would definitely say there's validity. I mean, just as evaluators, I would say um, we're not uh, scratching Caden off as not being an NBA type prospect. I mean, we're talking about a six foot four, big, strong point guard that wins everywhere he plays. Um, a kid that's a, a very good, impactful defender. Now, we have seen year over year just be a floor general, a guy that sets the table for everyone around him. Now, the biggest uh, weakness in his game has undoubtedly been him, been his uh, shooting ability, especially from three. Now, if you watched him from the time that he was in eighth grade like I have up to this point, I mean, the progression in his jump shot, while he still has plenty of uh, room to continue growing as a shooter, the growth he has made since he was a, eight, in eighth grade and as a freshman up to this point has been tremendous. Uh, so this is a kid that we see keep getting better. So while you say – uh, you do probably have to recruit them a little different. A part of the Caden recruiting pitch is this is our development plan for you. And maybe it may not be a one and done, but potentially a two and done or three and done type prospect just to get that shot uh, continuing to be more polished and be a, a bigger threat from beyond three. Yeah. And his ability to help drive winning, I think is, is undeniable. All right, want to go back to Adidas here. Boss, we want to ask you about two of the better guards in the three SSB circuit, and that's Mikel Brown and Braylon Mullins. Were there some recruiting updates or buzz about those two guys this weekend? Yeah, I think there's starting to be some buzz about both of them for sure. Um, you know, I want to start off with Mikel Brown, who's really making a strong case, um, even stronger already as the number two point guard in the country, is maybe the top point guard in the country. He was absolutely electric at the three SSB event. Um, He's pushing six foot four size wise, explosive athletically. But with the recruiting front, we're talking about a guy that I think in the spring we'll all agree it was it was widely accepted that Ole Miss was the runaway team to beat and that a commitment could be imminent. Now that has not happened. Um, and Ole Miss is still in it and they had an assistant watching him. But we're talking about a guy who things have opened up a little bit. First of all, he's got to pick where he's going to high school next year before he even picks a school. He's not going to be at overtime mm -hmm. elite. There's a couple options out there. So once he gets that settled out, he's going to start setting up visits and things of that nature. But along with Ole Miss, there's probably three other schools and there's room for more to get in there that I would have my eye on right now. I would be looking at Alabama. I would be looking at Kentucky. And I would also be looking at Texas. Texas mm -hmm. Rodney Terry was there on Saturday and Sunday watching Michael, keeping a close eye on him. Um, I think there's, there's some steam building up for the Longhorns right there. Not enough to call them a leader or anything like that but definitely someone that I want to keep an eye on with Ole Miss, Alabama, and Kentucky at this point. Now, boss, let me ask you about this because I, I think we've been ahead of the curve on uh, on Brown. We've had him in the top 10. I think that's right. Um, I think he's poised to maybe even jump higher. And, and because you made the point there, I think he's embraced being a true point guard. I, I love that he's so talented with the ball, but the way he can see the entire floor. This really stood out for me at, at USA Basketball. The way he can see the entire floor, throw skip passes off the dribble with both hands and hit either corner, uh, and is, is seemed to really embrace being as much of a distributor as he is a scorer because we know he's hyper-skilled with the ball in his hands. That part to me has been really impressive. Add on to that the fact that he's a late bloomer who's grown, I think it's five or six inches in the last year or two, um, that to me just really changes his trajectory. So respond to that if you will, but then give us the update on Braylon Mullins as well, because a lot of fan bases are interested in that one. Yeah, no doubt. You know, you and I were at Overtime Elite back in the fall when we sat down with a lot of the kids there and, and did some in-depth interviews with them. And after we were done, Michael pulled me aside and he asked me, he said, he said, Hey, what do you think about the direction I'm going in? And, and I told him, you know, flatly that, I kind of thought he had stalled in his development a little bit and that we knew he could score, but he had to start showing the ability to make those around him better while also doing that. And he didn't get mad. He didn't get frustrated. He really took it to heart. And obviously we're not the be all end all. We're certainly not the only one telling him these things, but for a young prospect to not only seek out some advice on his game, but then take it to heart, not get offended, not be worried about anything like that. It shows that he's really about the right stuff and the results are definitely showing with his game right now. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. No, All right, no, Braylon you, Mullins, what's the yeah, latest? So, so Braylon Mullins, it seems like everybody has jumped in on the top 25 shooting guard from Indiana. You know, he picked up a Duke offer on Sunday. You've got North Carolina. You've got Kansas. You've got UConn. you got Michigan. Of course, home state, Indiana, Kentucky. I mean, Tennessee, a long, long list. And I think this is a guy 
that we're going to see take a lot of visits, maybe six, seven, eight visits. He's going to get the full impact of all this. But heading into these visits, I firmly believe that there are probably two schools that have maybe opened up a little bit of a gap between the rest of them. And that's UConn, where he's going to take his first visit. And then Indiana, where he's going to visit in the middle of September. Indiana, obviously, is the home state school. He's got a lot of love for Indiana, from what I've heard, and definitely some interest in the school. And UConn, of course, coming off of two straight national titles and showcasing what they can do with the development of players. And just the way he's wired, he kind of fits right in with them. You know, both were constant presences at his games while I was there. And I'm not saying it's just those two. But as he gets ready to jump into a very lengthy and deep recruiting process with the bluest of the blue bloods involved, I do think that UConn and Indiana begin the race just a little bit ahead of everybody else. Here's the thing with that, though. Like, in theory, that that's a great idea. But the reality is, by the time he's done taking those eight visits, he's not going to have all eight options left on the board because those those schools will likely have taken somebody else. When you're talking about schools of that nature, uh, they're going to be recruiting more than one player at that position and going to be put in a position where they might have to make a decision before he's ready to. So that's going to be a really interesting timetable to watch. Braylon Mullins was the biggest riser in last month's updated national rankings, uh, jumped all the way up into the top 30. He's an elite shooter. I think he's an underrated defender as well. And obviously now he's just got everybody recruiting him. Guys, um, quick shout out, not just to you, but but to the entire 24-7 sports team. Brandon Jenkins, Deshaun London, these guys were on the road in full force. And I should also say, not just the five of us, but the entire network of the team sites and those those guys were at the amount of coverage that came out of the first week of the recruiting period is absolutely off the chart. So whether you're looking for the national stuff, which you can find on the 24-7 sports page, or you're looking for team centric stuff, which you can find on those individual sites, it was just a big time week. And I know we're going to get after it again this week. I'm headed to Nike. Trav, where are you headed? I'll be at the 3SSB All-American Camp and potentially bouncing around Atlanta as many of these teams' seasons have come to a close. Some of these guys will be popping in through there with their AU teams uh, to continue on in front of college coaches. And, Boss, where are you going to be this week? I'll be in Indianapolis for the Puma Next Pro Circuit. All right. Well, it's going to be another great week. Make sure you stay locked to 247sports.com for all the latest from the recruiting period. Remember, this is college coaches' last opportunity to see players with their grassroots team, at least in the 17 and under before next week's NCAA Academy. So we will see you again next week. Remember the 24-7 Sports College Basketball Show every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central Time. You can watch it on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel live. And of course, you can go back and watch it anytime. As always, thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>